Hey everybody, my name is Jamie and we are continuing on with our programming tutorial series. This tutorial we're going to start loading in some worlds or actually just start uh, with the world class. So let's actually try to make something uh, to travel around on, some sort of little world. It's not going to be the full class, but we're going to get it started at least. So let's go to our classes folder and create a new directory called worlds. And in this folder, we'll create a new uh, JavaScript file. And it's going to be called world. All right. So in here, we're going to do like we do. Define class. And we will also take in uh, possibly a few others. Let me see. We're going to take in our tile loader in here, our utilities, oh, which I haven't created yet. We'll create that later. Um, and we'll just take in these two for now. Tile loader being with a capital T, class, and tile loader. All right. So first thing we're going to do is create a tiles array and this is going to store all of the IDs uh, for the tiles in which position they are going to be in uh, we will also have um, let's actually create these inside of the constructor so let's first say uh, world is equal to a equal to class dot extend and we'll do our initialize function or our constructor and it's going to take a path for now and it'll be underscore path and instead of doing everything inside of here let's create a function called load world all right and we'll run this dot load world we'll put that in here right after this one we will say load world and it's going to take a path as well now we're not actually going to grab the uh, path in this tutorial and or grab a file in this tutorial and do it and run it we're actually going to just kind of hard code some stuff so we can make sure that everything's working correctly so we will also have uh, our tick passing in the graphics object and we will have our render and passing in delta time all right so first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to store the tiles that we'll be loading in from a map now that uh, that is what we will eventually be doing right now let's we're going to be kind of hard coding some in so we do need a way to do that so I will come here and create this dot tiles set it equal to a blank object and we'll also create this dot width and this dot height and set them uh, we will set them in here for now we'll set that equal to 5 and this one equal to 5 alright so uh, the other thing that we can do now is is start kind of setting tiles and adding them to the tiles array so let me explain how this is going to work this tiles array is actually going to be multi-dimensional so it's going to have a a first index in in that index it will have an array with indexes as well kind of creating a grid of x and y positions so it would look kind of like you know this x and this y and that will give us a specific tile ID within that uh, 
multi-dimensional array. So we can't create a multi-dimensional array in JavaScript and define it as a blank, you know, multi-dimensional array, but we can create an array within an array. Uh, so we'll end up doing that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, kind of hard code and set uh, some tiles up. And to do that, we're going to create a for loop. All right. So in here, we're going to say for uh, x is equal to 0, x is less than this dot width, and uh, x plus plus. And what we're going to do then is we will also say uh, for y is equal to 0, y is less than this dot height, and y plus plus. Now in here, we will, we're just going temporarily to set the ID of tiles at x and y equal to a tile ID. So we will uh, we will say this dot tiles x y is equal to and then what is it going to be equal to it'll be equal to for now zero all right so the only problem is with with this code is right now it's going to run through it's going to it's going to say hey x comma y or x index and then uh, the y index of that is going to be zero but it's not going to set x as an actual array yet because it hasn't actually we haven't actually declared what this uh, what this variable is in in the position x so what we have to do is say if not so if this dot tiles x does not exist or is not set then we'll say this dot tiles x is equal to a blank array and what that allows us to do now is basically when it's the first time we ever refer to the array in x we're going to set it to a blank array so therefore when we come down here and put the position y in there it will make sense it'll know it's an array and it'll know that the, you know that there is a index y available i hope that makes sense um so now we're setting it to a, a, a ID of zero, which if we look in our tiles, uh, tile loader class, that is a grass tile. So that's what we're saying right now. We're saying that we have a five by five map and every single tile is a grass tile. So, uh, the next thing we would need to do is we would need to render those. So how are we going to render and grab the information for the tile? So we do know we're going to need to loop through all of these. So we're going to say this uh, for y equals zero, y is less than this dot height, and y plus plus. Now we're doing y first because uh, it just in the future it will help with things and uh, it can help with some some errors that you might have uh, later on. And then we'll act, go through the x as well x is less than this dot width x plus plus all right so now we want to render a tile but all we have is a id all we have is a zero you know a, num a number zero for every tile how, how do we translate that into an actual tile so the one thing that we can do is in our tiles in our tiles uh class we have um, this tiles uh, uh, this tiles array and what this does is it actually stores instances at the index of the ID of uh, that tile so remember we created the tile um, grass passing in zero and that sent sent it into the tiles array in our tile class at the position zero so that means if we can just grab that index that we're getting from our load world we can actually if we can access that zero we can throw it into this array and it will return an instance that we can actually draw so to do that I'm going to come down here and we're going to create another function underneath render and it'll be called load tile 
Uh, we could call it low tile. We could call it get tile. Uh, we'll call it get tile. And that's going to be a function, and it's going to take an x and a y. So, oops, and then in this function, we will actually say uh, tile loader, which we actually want it to return tile here, just like we did before. Um, it's actually going to be set as tile. So tile dot tiles, and then we want to get uh, we want to get the one at the position zero in this case, which we can refer to this dot tiles x and y. So we know that tiles at the given x and y will return currently zero. And when we generate a map, it will return different tiles. But for now, it'll just be zero. Um, so if we return this, if we return tiles dot or tile dot tiles with the index of the tiles x y in our array here, we should get in this case zero. We should get the instance of uh, we should get the instance of the grass tile. So now that we're in the render function here, we can say this dot get tile passing in x and y dot render because it's going to return an instance and then we can just pass in the oops we need to do this the other way around I can't believe I did that this is the render function and this is the tick function um, passing in G for the graphics brush and then X and Y so let's see let's go into our let's go into our game state class and where we have tile loader here. Let's remove tile loader. And let's stop rendering a tile there. And let's just tick our world. So we'll come into our we'll come into the game state constructor and say this dot world is equal to a new world. And we'll pass in a blank path because we aren't really using paths now. Um, so we do need to import our class. So world world and then in our app.js file we need to include world so that we can refer to it app slash classes slash world slash world and oh finally we do need to come into our class our world class and actually return world so return world so we have access to it in our game state so in game state here we're creating a new world passing in a blank string because we're not worried about paths at the moment um, and then we will say this dot world dot tick and pass in DT and then we will say this dot world dot render passing in G so let's see what we have now. I'll bring my browser to the screen. And we will run this. So it looks like we have no changes. I don't see any changes. I mean, the tile looks a little weird. Oh, maybe we should probably not uh, use the X and Y alone to render the tile. See, that is just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's that's very small. Those are pixels. We need to do it in uh, in tiles. So what we can do now is we can actually take advantage of that tile dot tile width for the X, and we can multiply by it. Same can be said with our y. We can multiply by tile dot tile height. And what this should do now is actually push the tiles uh, into their correct position. So let's refresh the page now. And we should see a little 5 by 5 map. 
So here we are, we've got our little guy and he's walking on his little map. So you can see how this is working. We're actually um, reading that tiles array and getting the instance based on whatever the ID is in this tiles array. Um, now just to show you, we can come up to here and we can say set this to one. So now every tile is a different tile and we'll render or we'll rerun the, the game. And look, now we've got a different tile here. Um, and finally we can do, since we only have three, we'll do each one. And we will say two. And refresh the page. And now we have our stone tile. All right, so now we've got the gist and the general part of the class taken care of and the next tutorial will actually load in uh, a world and that's a little bit of work so we'll make that it's a tutorial on its own so uh, I hope you guys enjoy it and uh, you know play around do do some playing with this tutorial and uh, we'll pick up where we left off we'll refresh the page and see that no matter how many tiles we have, really no change. There's not going to be much of a change in performance because we're still just using that one instance and rendering it multiple times to the screen. All right, well, I hope to see you in the next tutorial where we load a world in from a map. That's going to be really exciting. You'll be able to create tons of different maps and, uh, and uh, have tons of fun. So I'll see you guys in that video.